You would have heard uh, over the last weekend, um, well, particularly over the last three or four days, um, the controversy that has taken place with the Karakia and with um, Mayor, New Kuiper Premier Craig Jepson uh, seeking to have the Karakia uh, banned. Um, as a result of, it was the first time in which a Māori Ward representative has been at the table of the um, Kuiper District Council. And uh, Pera Paniora uh, joins us. And thank you very much for doing so. And congratulations upon your election, by the way. Oh, kia ora, good morning. Thank you, Michael. Um, now, you were the first, so they had a Māori Award for the first time in Kuipra. Is that right, this time? Yes, correct. This was the inaugural year for the seat. So um, why did you stand, if you don't mind me asking, first of all? <clears throat> it's a, that's quite an interesting question because it, it definitely wasn't my desire to stand, but I kept uh, repeatedly getting approached from members of the public and different people and, you know, encouraging me and saying, Peter, you've got what it takes. Um, you, you know, you, you, you need to... You need to go for it. And so, um, you know, I've got a quite a long-standing connection um, to the kaipara um, on both um, my maternal grandmother and grandfather's sides. Um, you know, my great-great-great-great-grandfather was Pirore Te Afa, who was the paramount chief of the area and who sold uh, Dargaville to actually to Mr Dargaville, um, you know, in exchange for jobs for our people. Um, and, you know, I felt um, a sense of obligation almost um, to to run um, in the election and um, I felt that I had the necessary skills and experience um, to really make a goal of it. Um, listen, I'm really fascinated because uh, what you've just said, gosh, you've, you're, you're almost a documentary. That's a fascinating story you've told about your, was it your great-great-grandfather? Yes, my great 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 grandfather. And he sold. He he was the paramount chief of. Was sorry. It would be a iwi or a hapu of the time. So he he yeah, and that's a controversy in itself. But um, it was the the iwi at the time. Right, and he he willingly sold land to what he settlers. Sold land to settlers uh, and you know it's quite controversial because there were other um, obviously other interests um, who didn't agree um, with that sale. Um, I like to think of him as a visionary um, who you know had the foresight to see that what was more important was jobs for our people and you know we still have my whanau still live there you know we have a thriving community in the Kaipara Dargaville is you know, and the Kaipara is one of the um, fastest growing areas in New Zealand. Um, so that, you know, I feel that that just shows the, the type of visionary that he was. Um, and you're no slug yourself, if you don't mind me saying. You went to Dargaville High School, you worked at the Ministry of Social Development, uh, and then you went and studied law at the University of Auckland. Uh, when did you graduate? So I graduated in 2014. Right. And so you came back to Dargaville to practice, did you? Yeah. And so, I, you know, I've done many, many <coughs> roles and jobs. I, I started out on the Kumaras like all Dargavillians do. <laughs> um, and I, I worked for about two years at the University of Auckland overseeing the Māori academic program for Māori law students. I myself was... Um, a product of that program and I really wanted to give back as well um, and so I did that for a while and I actually got a graduate position after that at Auckland Council in the governance um, division uh, in the treaty settlements team but um, it's, it's quite funny because things come full circle. For years I've been, you know, we're coming off the tail end of the recession and, and for about two years I've been looking at jobs up in Targaville, law jobs, and there was just nothing, you know, nothing came up. And then three months into my role at Auckland Council, a graduate lawyer position opened up at Hammond's Law and Erin Collins-Wilson was the one that employed me and allowed me to come home. And she's one of our other councillors. So I had to ask to myself about how, you know, things always come full circle. Yeah. Oh, very good. Um, listen, it's a, 
awesome responsibility that you've been given. Um, now, in the the Maori ward, I know it was in actual fact quite a contest because you had what four other candidates standing against it was you. Four other, yeah, four other male candidates. Now, and I was, I. Mm. Of four male ones, you were the only female. Yeah, correct. So I was kind of like. You know, in 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 Maori gym and Tikanga, males are always considered, you know, the leaders for, you know, for for good reasons. And so I was kind of like, you, if you were voting for me, you were vote, voting against the grain, you know, the Maori wahine young, um, yeah. And, well, that, that, well, and there might have been some noses put out of joint that night. I think. Um, <laughs> what iteration did you get elected on? So I think it was the fourth iteration and it was a um, quite close uh, race between me and another candidate, Brendan Nathan, who was also running in the mayoral, um, yeah. Oh, the right. Mayoral. Yeah. So he gets, yeah, all the publicity of being in the mayoralty contest as well. Um, all right. Absolutely. So you're the first Maori ward representative in Kaipara. Now... As you would expect, there would be a fair. There would be some people who say, "Do you really need a Maori ward? Could you have stood mm-hmm. para for any of the other wards? Do you think?" And also being elected, I'm listening to an intelligent, articulate, educated person um, who would, I'm sure, be an outstanding local government representative anywhere. Could you have been elected anywhere else? Do you think as well? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I think that I would have been elected into the general weight award, but for me it was important that, um, you know, what I stand for is to be a voice for our Māori people. Um, and, you know, I have the ability to sit quite comfortably in both worlds having practice law, you know, with some of the most intelligent, witty lawyers um, and most, you know, uh, are Pākehā. So a lot of my working life in the last six years has been um, spent with Pākehā. Yeah. And um, for me, it was important to have a Māori mandate because I don't feel that, um, you know, I could have kind of went out in the community and pushed for certain Māori, you know, interests or, you know, issues if it wasn't in the Māori ward having that mandate. Right. Now, I'm looking at the mayoral um, candidates there. Craig Jepson was elected as mayor. I think this is his first term, too, as mayor. Has he previously been a councillor, has he? He has not previously been a councillor, no. Oh, okay. So both of you are newbies. Um, And also I see that the person who came runner-up to him was uh, a lady by the name of Karen Joyce Pucky. I assume she's of Maori descent herself? Yes. Right, so she got pretty close to getting elected too. She did get pretty close to being elected, um, but she it was quite a last minute decision for her. Um, so she was a little bit behind the um, you know behind the eight ball in terms of um, really getting out there. As you know, Craig campaigned well. He had the backing of Democracy and Z. They were quite you know vocal, visual, uh, and all of that. And so he you know he ran quite a you know, quite a um, convincing campaign. So when you say democracy is dead, you mean that's Matt King's team? Correct. Right. Oh, I didn't realise that they had backed a candidate up there. Oh, okay, cool. Now, I'm also looking, can I just say, at the makeup of your council. I'm looking at your Kuiper District Council results. And in a funny sort of way, mm, although you had a lot of Maori candidates, are you actually the only Maori who got elected? Yes, unfortunately, I am the only Māori who got elected. Yeah, because I see that Karen stood for the council and she got fourth uh, and they only elected three. Um, All right. Yes. Now, the issue, of course, that's uh, generated quite a bit of controversy is uh, the clash between the mayor, the new mayor, and yourself um, over the karakia. And initially, um, I sort of have some sympathy for the mayor in the sense, uh, Pera, that because I've been a mayor... And I got rid of the prayer uh, because I always argued there should be a separation between church and state. Um, and, you know, that's pretty much been New Zealand's sort of constitutional background. Why is the karakia an exception to that, do you think? 
that's an exception because we are a bicultural nation. You know, we the Treaty of Waitangi and its principles are incorporated into law. We've come a long way um, since the years where, um, you know, in order to treat everyone equally, you excluded um, everyone. Now, we can't forget that for years the Karakia has been part of quite a district council meetings. So it's not like this was a new, you know, a new thing. I naively thought that I was just continuing with the conventions um, you know, of Kaipara District Council, you have Section 10 of the Standing Orders that was adopted in 2020 that says that, um, you know, meetings can be open with Karakia where, where it's appropriate. I couldn't think of a more appropriate time um, given that the, you know, one of the only times that the Standing Orders applies are during a full council meeting um, that that would, you know, essentially be the most appropriate time to have a karakia. You know, there was no discussion with me beforehand, like, hey, Peter, um, just so you know, we're, we're actually banning or scrapping the karakia, this triennium. And then we could have had some conversations, so it very much was left field. Um, you know, you could see um, the mayor reading from a pre-scripted document that he had available um, to uh, to refer to during that uh, you know during that cultural clash you know it's been um, described as um, and so that you know he could have had that with me prior to the meeting. Yeah, no, that would have been I'm sure beneficial for everybody. Um, did you not have a prior meeting of elected members, uh, which is sort of normal, just to chat about these sorts of things? No. So the first time you saw each other, all of you, was at the formal swearing-in of the Kuiper District Council. So that wasn't the formal swearing-in. Oh, that was, so the, that was the first full meeting. Oh, did you have the karakia so at the swearing-in, at the at what they call the triennial meeting? Yes, we had a pool for the at Otude Marae, followed by a swearing-in ceremony where a karakia was also conducted. We had our induction... Uh, the, the following week where the karakia was conducted and I naively thought that the full council meeting where the standing orders apply, where Section 10 states that, you know, the can be, yeah. meeting may be yeah. opened with a karakia, uh, you know, I naively thought that it was granted. Yeah. Um, and, and I did think, you know, oh, it's a misstep, he's quite nervous, this is his first full meeting um, and, and that's why I pressed the subject um, further and then it became quite apparent that this was a you know predetermined decision um, and, 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 and I let it go at that point. Okay. Um, now, I guess the big question is, because we all want you to succeed, have you managed mm. to sort of have a chat with them subsequently to that and say, can we sort this out? Look, we're still working on it. Um, you know, things are happening today, things are happening tomorrow to try and get us to a point. Because at the end of the day, it needs to be a democratic decision. I understand that it is the chair's, um, you know, it's for the chair to determine how a meeting is conducted. But this is a lot more. This is tikanga. This is our culture. Um, you know, we've come so far to get you know, just taking a mouldy incorporated and in, you know, in small minuscule ways. We're not talking I'm not talking about a two hour karakia. I'm talking about a thirteen second karakia. Um that would just set the you know, set the mood and the tone for the meeting, ensure that everybody, you know, goes home safely and gets on with their day. Um, you know, there's nothing omin ominous about the karakia or anything like that. Um, but, I, yeah, I would hope that we can come to some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of pathway forward together. Um, but certainly, you know, if, if we don't, then I, I suppose I would just have to say the karakia before the standing orders kick in um, at the next.